Hey, this is a match once again. What about the other videos? Another paid request, this time from Cryptid Chance. And it's raining and storming like a mother, but I remember to put the battery in the camcorder so if anything does happen and lose power for a year or a month or a day or five minutes, at least this will still keep going. <clears throat> but yeah, Cryptid Chance wanted me to talk about the game plan. The game plan with Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Now this is directed by the same guy that did Race to Witch Mountain, which for a Disney film I had some fun with. I and I was entertained by it. I don't have a lot of nostalgia for the old Estate from Witch Mountain movies. But I did like Race to Witch Mountain. The It was you know, him playing a cab driver, trying to play a regular guy. Had some pretty decent practical effects, moved at a good pace, had some, you know, decent action set pieces. But that's like the only thing this guy's done that I've liked, because he also did Paul Blart Mall Cop 2. He did Playing With Fire, which I talked about that not too long ago with John Cena and T.D. Michael Key, John Leguizamo, where they're firefighters. It was goofy, silly, because they were kids. So this is... Dwayne Johnson, looking tiny by the way, this is before he really got jacked up with the muscles, because now anytime you see him, he's so like big and massive, then you watch this, it's like, God, the rock looks so tiny in comparison to how he looks now, but he plays this rich quarterback playing for the team called the Rebels, and you get the idea that he's... He likes his team, and he smiles, but he's a bit selfish. Like, there's a game playing, he could throw it to an open player, but he goes in for the touchdown because he wants the glory. He's a big fan of Elvis, he has a bulldog. He has parties with his teammates, but then everybody leaves, and you tell there's a sense of lo loneliness to him. Football is his life. And one day, he opens the door, and there's this little girl. And, of course, you know where this is going, but it takes like five minutes to get there. And, lo and behold, I'm your daughter. My mom is blah, blah, blah in Africa doing some humanitarian work. So you're supposed to take care of me for a month. Uh, Tira Sedgwick, she's been in a few films. She plays The Rock's agent. Uh, so you have some of the team members. You even have like a, the big, strong guy that barely speaks intelligible verbiage which Tyler Main played that type of character in Play With Fire so I guess this director loves that you have the big tough god he, he, he growls and, but the little girls go to warm his heart now to be fair as a film as a Disney film Dwayne Johnson here's the thing I don't hate Dwayne the Rod Johnson despite my thoughts on him in the past. Loved him in wrestling. Great wrestler, fantastic on the promo. Had wonderful matches with Stone Cold Steve Austin. I like some of his movies. I love the rundown. I can watch Race to Witch Mountain. Even some of his lesser films. I don't think he's bad in Rampage. Or even in this film. Because he's still got that charm. He's still that, that charisma that likability factor and you see why he became such a big star you know he's great in the Fast and Furious movies as Hobbs but it's just one of those things where number one how can I miss if you don't go away it feels like he's one of those guys that feels like he's everywhere number two when you see it's weird to say if you see the same shit over and over again. You say that with other action stars like Jordan Van Damme, but it just it's you just kind of wish. For, I'll speak for myself. I wish for him to do Arnold Schwarzenegger, Stallone, Van Damme type of movies, R-rated, balls to the wall, high impact, let loose with the language and the verbiage, let loose with the action and the violence. Like that kick-ass movie. To me, the closest he came to was The Rundown. Or Doom, which was rated R. 
like the type of character you played in Doom, but if it was a your know, good guy. I get it though. These films he made are much more safer, much more cleaner, much more kid friendly. Whether it be Sky Scraper or Rampage or the Jumanji sequels or the Jungle Cruise, the G.I. Joe sequels, some of them made a lot of money. Some of them didn't, but some of them made a lot of money and it to him he knows he's a brand to sell for that audience. So yeah, get to be in a superhero movie like Black Adam, get to do this, get to do that. Granted, that film didn't do the greatest. <laughs> um, there's rumors that he'll be in the new... He'll come back to the Fast and Furious films. And since the final one's going to be split into now, what, three parts? Yeah, more than likely he'll be in one of them. I would bet money he will be. So, yeah, he's a, it's a brand, but... He does have a nice smiling charm to him but I mean this is it, it felt like hey Vin Diesel's film The Pacifier was a big surprise hit so you got this film you got that Jackie Chan film The Spy Next Door even a few years later Playing With Fire with John Cena the Action guy have a kid or a family have some goofy stuff in it and I like The Pacifier as goofy as silly was I enjoyed it as a family film. This, less so. I will be honest, I thought this was better than Playing With Fire or Paul Block Ball Cop 2. It was the most atrocious thing I saw. There wasn't, you know, thankfully a lot of fart jokes and that type of jokes. But very, you know, I don't know if I want to say sitcom type of humor. The kid makes food and gives him to the... She gives him to the rock and he's eating it and his tongue goes numb. And what's in this? Cinnamon. Cinnamon? I'm allergic to cinnamon. So he's trying to do these promos, but he talks to like this because of the cinnamon. Or the rod doesn't know how to cook for this kid, so it's like, you don't need that sugar, you need some big old food. Makes her big plate of spaghetti. And the little girl does a fine enough job as well. You know, for what she's given and told to do, she does fine enough. I mean, I've seen much worse kid actors. She has a cute demeanor, so you can understand why a lot of the football players warm up to her. And It's kind of by the numbers. You've seen it all before. There's a point where he forgot the kid and she sticks up for him, but I uh, take her to the ballet, which The Rock does. You tell he has a little bit of crush on the ballet dancer, teacher lady. Was his, was it Rosalind Sanchez? Rosalind? I forget the actress's name. I've seen her in a few other stuff. I think she was in Rush Hour 2. Might be wrong in that. I think she was in Rush Hour 2, who Jackie Chan had the bit of the hots for. I believe that was her. There's a bit when him and the team are watching a game and she changes the remote and he's like, what are you doing? Oopsie. She floods the place with bubble bath. So it goes from him bringing her to the ballet and learning more about ballet to him getting more in touch with his team, the girl hanging out with the team, and even her getting own little football uniform. Just, I did kind of a by the numbers, you've seen it all before type of family film that, again, Dwayne Johnson, he does have the charisma, but I'm sure in his mind, he's like, hey, I want to follow the Arnold mold. Arnold did comedies, but even those. Those kind of just seemed a bit funnier. I don't know how else to put it. Like twins and Terror and Cop. It just seemed funnier. It just seemed more enjoyable to watch than this. It's just a Disney fluff piece. That's the best way to put it. It's a Disney fluff piece. If I want to watch a film where adults have to deal with kids out of the blue, I'd go watch Three Men and a Baby. Which even that... Three Men and a Baby feels like it has more edge than this movie. That's sad. Would, it, would Tom Selleck and Steve Grunberg are arguing? 
Well, we're not changing her in the hallway. Well, maybe we should start, God damn it! And the powder goes up. You're gonna clean that up. <laughs> this is one of those films you tell was made in a machine. You know, I know there's talking about movies being made with AI, strip wise. AI, artificial intelligence writing strips. This would be one of those strips that an AI would write. Bit tough action guy. Have a bit of art where he comes from selfish to unselfish, caring about himself to care about others. A little bit of friction. Not too much to screw up the tone. His buddies getting silly antics with the kid. They warm up to her. He starts warm, warming up to her. A little bit of drama at the end where they're all be separated. But the person realizes they miss that person and they've changed. So then when they leave another, they get back together again. It's a sports base, so there's going to be the big game, there's going to be hesitation, or, or we don't win the game, they don't win the game, there's going to be a celebration. Like, all the check marks pretty much get crossed over. Except, again, I'm surprised there was no pew jokes, fart jokes, piss jokes, none of that. I'm surprised by that. Other recognizable people, like Tira Sedgwick as the agent that she'll say stuff, and then she's like, what'd I say? She'll say inappropriate, but not like, okay, I'll fix this. You're this, you're this. The kid's the problem. No, the kid's, the, I'll clean this up, and the kid's the mess. And then she'll look at the kid in the rock. What'd I say? Uh, Morris Chestnut, which he's been in a couple Steven Seagal films. Under Siege 2 was one. Uh, Half Past Dead, he was the main villain. He's there as the football player who is a family man, so he gives The Rock a few tips throughout the film. One person that surprised me is, spoiler alert, you find out that the mom has actually passed away, and the kid was supposed to go to this school, but she went to see her dad. And so the mom's sister finds out about this, and the mom's sister comes in. At first gets mad at The Rock, why'd you take her? Until... At least thankfully they didn't draw this out. I appreciate the movie for doing that. They didn't draw this out. Very quickly she realizes she didn't tell you. Her mom, of course someone The Rock used to like back in the day, passed away months ago. Now the lady that's telling The Rock this, who is the the, the mom's sister, so I guess the, the girl's aunt, the little girl's aunt, is Paige Turco. And I'm sitting there going, why do I, why does she look so familiar? Oh shit, it's April O'Neil and Ninja Turtles 2 Seek Through the Ooze and Ninja Turtles 3. I mean, wow, it's Paige Turco. It's nice to see her again. I mean, being a huge fan of the first two Ninja Turtle films, like, those are two of my favorites called Nostalgia, like those are two films that really was a status in my childhood that I watched over and over again on VHS tape. The third one, not so much, but the, the first two, the 1990 and the sequel, Secret of the Ooze in 91. So whenever someone from that pops up, they go, oh shit, like Judith Hode, yeah, I'm watching the Nightmare on Elm Street remake. I'm like, who's that doctor? Oh shit, it's April O'Neil from the first Ninja Turtles. Same with when I saw in Cadillac Man with Robin Williams. Or in this, I'm like, oh shit, it's Paige Turco, April from Secret of the Ooze. I'm like, okay, that was cool to see her in another part. Because she didn't do a whole, I mean, I'm sure you look at her career, she did a whole lot, but nothing that I remember and I remember seeing her in. So she might have done stuff afterward, but nothing that I saw a lot of. So yeah, it, go figure. So that says so that the most excitement I got out of this movie was seeing Paige Turco. Because I'm a 90's Ninja Turtle movie nerd. 
So again, there's the big game, the Rot's doing poorly, the little girl comes in, Paige Turker realizes that the Rot loves the girl, he gears himself up, he's not selfish this time, makes a few passes, they win the championship, and it's also one of those movies where, and I've seen this done a few times before, where you have the whole cast singing the song, but you know they did in like different locations, so like they're singing the song, and it cuts to a different location, and a different location, they're, so that means, I guess during filming, each time they went to a location, okay, you guys seen this song, we'll film it, and then we'll just edit it all together. That's been done a lot of times too, so that's what I mean, just so many things in this movie, just, I guess if you just, you with your kid, or you just want to see a typical, generic, Disney film, or if you're a dire fan of The Rock. There's a lot of worse movies to watch. Like I said, as I'm watching, I'm going, okay, this is not the worst thing ever. It's not rant-worthy. You know, there's times, oh, this film sucks. And it does kind of suck. But at the same time, it's kind of... It sucks, but it's harmless. And compared to a lot of comedies and a lot of movies today, I guess a harmless comedy is kind of kind of hard to get bad at and the rock himself has made worse movies i think jumanji sequels are a lot more irritating to watch compared to this so of the director's work is better than pull blood more cop 2 it's better than playing with fire i still think race to which bounds the director's best work but dwayne johnson's career Skyscraper made me more mad because it was a waste of a diehard type of movie with The Rock. And Snitch I found more boring than this. Jumanji Secrets I found more irritating than this. Jungle Cruise I found much more boring than this. So it's... To me, I'm like, I would just rather watch a double feature, feature of The Pacifier and Three Men and a Baby with Tom Selleck and The Goot, Steve Gutenberg. But I mean, like I said, if you have kids, you want to sit them down and watch something, you could do a lot worse. You do a lot better. It's kind of one of those movies. At the very least, The Rock, Dwayne Johnson and The Kid, they're not too bad together. The bolt, you know, the girl is sweet. The Rock still has that charisma, and like I said, it's still it's interesting if you go back and watch and you just see, fucking tiny he looks. He just he sh it's like damn. You you watch what he how he looks now. You watch this like fuck man like, he went boom, boom. like the muscles went from here to there. Now, did he do that all naturally? <laughs> I'll leave that up to you. So, it, so stuff like that. And, oh, Paige Turco. I, on the flip side, did this movie need to be an hour and 50 minutes? This movie did not need to be an hour and 50 minutes. I mean, that little more is two hours. These type of movies, 90 minutes is kind of the right... You know, 90... 95 minutes... But an hour and 50 minutes is a bit lengthy. This this could be trimmed a bit. This movie could be trimmed a bit. But with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.